we will begin. I guess we have everything, right? Oh, no, we're not sharing. <laughs> we're not sharing the screen, so you don't see what we're actually doing here. Share. Now it starts to be a little bit more organized and interesting, I guess. Okay, guys, you see, right? All right, all yours. Have fun. Hello. Good morning. Let me just uh, open up the... Uh, Open up the other tab, which I have too many, I think. Just one second. Okay. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? The vectors and matrices? Yes. Cool. Hi, everybody. Good morning. And thank you all for joining. It's too quiet in here. Hi. Um, okay, so uh, I'm Eyal. I don't know if we've met before. I think we have. Um, so today we'll talk about vectors and matrices, as you can see. Mostly about vectors, actually, if I'm being uh, more honest. And I've planned to do maybe another talk tomorrow on Friday about matrices. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about a about disclaimer about this topic, about math, because I was trying to prepare a projection uh, with reflection. And I always felt like I was kind of like hitting a wall because when I was trying to explain a different mathematical concept, you have to understand some basic mathematics for that as well. So I want to start some workshops that can actually help us uh, understand some of those ideas. And maybe later on, we'll do some more workshops about different matrices and vectors and different math. So I kind of like to have break it, break it down. Um, and this is the goal of this. So I don't know how much it will be interesting to people. If people are very savvy and comfortable with vectors. I don't know how much it's for you. If you have a phobia from vectors, I think it's for you as well, probably. That's me. That's you, yeah. Um, okay. So, um, second disclaimer that I want to say, or I think the philosophy behind it that I want to talk about, um, is I think what I'm trying to approach here is the fear that people have towards this kind of concept when you see different mathematical notations and equations, it can be very scary. Um, and I don't blame anybody, I actually blame the system that's trying to teach it in a certain way that doesn't really help people. Um, and when you see sine and cosines or different kind of like function, it scares, scares everybody. Um, so the first concept is to say that all of those theories and mathematical concepts and philosophies are about reflection of the world, and that's what they are. They're not just theory in the air, they're about to reflection that can help us break it down and de deconstruct the reality so we can rebuild it in a certain way that we like. Um, and I think when you start when you start thinking about parabolas and like, again, sine and cosines and trigonometry, all the scary words, as just tools that actually help you understand that and getting the right result, I think it's a bit more reassuring and helping in looking at that. So that's those are my two goals that I wanted to start with that, and just to kind of like, uh, Ease it out because I know a lot of people are scared from this kind of like topics for some reason. Um, so um, I will try, I think, by tomorrow or Friday, the second workshop, to go over this matrix, which is the basically um, linear transformation matrix that we use in the axis or in the camera. And I will try to explain to you and break it down what it's actually doing and why it's doing the way it's doing and why it looks like that. Or we have this zero zero one and those big numbers and these three by three small numbers <coughs> and what they represent. Um, but before that, of course, we have to go through what are bit matrices, what are the four, and today is going to be mostly about vectors. Um, so clear your mind from that, of course. Um, vectors, is, uh, matrices are basically are a concept that we have for centuries and centuries that is just a container for information. It's 2D array. It has columns and rows. So it's 2D, basically. You can also think about it as a rectangular array. Um, oh, sorry. Um, second, yeah, and it's been uh, used in a lot of different fields from uh, statistics and the ability to diagnose graphs and how uh, Facebook is using to basically connect different users, how we are grading uh, different pages on Google, how we are mapping different direction in Google Maps and stuff, stuff like that. So matrices have a lot of ability to do these kind of things, and the concept is that we can just run some algorithm all those table of information. That's the idea behind them. That's all it is. And we've seen them since we were children 
in a concept like that, of course. If you have like a day and an hour of the day that you go to school and you have a class that you have to go to, this is basically a matrix that you saw as a child. Um, and we can derive some information as well if we run some algorithms of that. If we attach um, a difficulty level to each class and stuff like that, we can actually detect, detect some uh, information on that, what can help a student to learn better. Uh, of course, we can see that there is um, forecast as well. If we have like any day and different types of information, again, we can deduct information. So that's what it's, that's what it's really for. And of course, yeah. oh. and of course, our images are constructed from matrices, actually three matrices. Uh, if we zoom enough, uh, for each channel we have three RGB, and basically each pixel is just an intensity of these wavelengths. Um, so the need for us is basically we can run, if you ever heard like Fourier transform and wavelet transform, which is more kind of like we use a lot of the time to uh, um, compress data and use transformation, which is kind of like for lines and stuff like that detection or other things. Um, again, it's just algorithm that allows us to run on those matrices and on those signals of data, and we can deduct from that. So this is kind of like the introduction to this kind of like point, the motivation of what we want to do is that. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, so let's start with vectors. And um, vectors are essentially, uh, as I said, matrices are 2D arrays. Vectors are just 1D arrays. They can also be considered as matrices as well. They're just one dimensional matrices. So vectors are matrices. Um, yeah, and the basic idea is just basically it's an array of components. So they can come as a, either a row or a column. And we can address each of the components in a dot over here. This is what just I, the notation that I like. It's not the proper notation. And we can have as many as elements instead of the vector. Um, so as you can see over here, we have v1, v2, and so on. So it's kind of going to be the basic form of that. Um, and in our case, of course, if we have an axis or a vertex, um, it's going to be XYZ components, and if we have a pixel, it's going to be RGB, of course, and we can address those as, let's say our vector name is V, point X, point Y, and so on, and if it's going to be a pixel name P vector, it's going to be dot R, dot, so it's very kind of like straightforward, right? Um, yeah. Just one second. Um, okay, so it just allows us to encapsulate concept, and instead of saying x, y, z of something, we can just call it v. That's all it is, really. So in our case, we have to talk about vectors, and I think there is a lot of confusion between vectors and points, and they've been used intertwined, and, and we kind of like mix those two, but there are different things. Um, yeah, so the first thing is basically the difference between a vector, <coughs> vector and a point, is a point is basically a position in space. Um, so it's kind of like an absolute concept. We have a point over here and I can drag it and all it tells me is just kind of like an absolute position in space. It's a marker in space. It's all it is. Vector, on the other hand, it's a relative concept, you can say. It has a magnitude or a length, so how long it is, and it has an angle, so where it's basically the direction of it, where it's looking at. I can move it around in space and no matter how I move it, it will always retain this data. It will always retain this direction and the length of it. And that's the main difference between them. Um, you can think a vector as kind of like displacement. So I can take my point and then add to it the vector, and my point now will move to this position, this absolute position. But the vector is still the same vector. And that's the main difference between them. Um, and we do use it, it works a lot of the time when we use basically p world, position world, and normals, which is the same thing. So our p world is basically just a point, an absolute point in space, and our vectors, and normals are actually just direction in space. Normals are usually magnitude of one, which I'll explain in a bit. Um, so they actually just hold direction in our case, um, to where the polygonal faces. Polygons are facing, yeah. Um, Another analogy that I think if you're still confusing with that is basically the idea between um, time and duration. If you think about time and duration, so time is kind of like this point thing. It's a marker in time. So now, right now, it's like 9.30, and it's an absolute mark in time. And duration would be kind of like the vector. Um, let's say five minutes would be a duration. It will take five minutes, so we know it's going to go forward. It's have a direction, and it will take five minutes, have a magnitude. So it's kind of like the same concept, if you think about it like that. And that's the vectors as well. And 
the ability to actually deconstruct those two concepts from direction and magnitude, um, it can be very, very, very powerful. And we can see a bit later how it's been used. Um, okay. So I'll just show some things um, in Nuke. And I have a very, very simple um, <clears throat> thing over here. I just have a sphere, basically, right? And I assume all of you know what normals. If not, I'll just explain them simple. Basically, normal. Uh, a lot of time when you read in books of graphics, they would explain that the normals are just basically like a nail being hit inside of the polygon, like a wood thing. So it would be perpendicular, so 90 degrees from the surface itself. Uh, it just tells us basically how things are faces and we can see, facing, and we can see it over here. So every polygon would have its own normal. Uh, in a case of normal spare polygons, we also have um, vertex normal, which is basically every vertex have its known normal, which is slightly different. It allows to actually render s smooth the concept. Um, and we can see over here that if I would look at the p-world, uh, sorry, if I look at the p-world, I would have this position of varieties in space. Um, and if you have normals, it will just show me where it's facing. And if you see over here, in this case, those values are equal, which is a bit confusing. Um, wait, let me just put it over here. Yeah, uh, this concept is a bit confusing. It's a bit confusing because it's a sphere. And this is kind of like what it can be called the unit sphere. It means that the magnitude of it is one. So the radius um, or the length of each point on the sphere is exactly one. Um, and a normal, as I said before, they are basically the magnitude of them. It doesn't have any magnitude, it's just one as well. So it just shows us the direction. And in this case, it just always basically will show the same thing. If I went our dragon over here, we'll see the difference, of course, in the position and in the normal. And if I will try to play it in the, in the position well as well, if you just put it over here, and I, I don't know if you know, I'm sure you guys know about it, it's position to points. I can just plug it in and we'll have basically the position. Um, and if I try to plot the normals, I will get something that is actually like that, which makes sense because all of my normals, including the dragon, are all facing basically in one unit away um, in every direction on the sphere, because it's all direction. So actually what we will see is always sphere or some sort of a sphere. And um, if I actually try to plug a cube over here, you'll see over here I have a cube as well. Um, and if you think about it, if we look at the normals of it, so if I just look at the p-wall, I will get something like that from this angle, right? Which makes sense. But if I look at the normals, they all have the same normal. All, all faces have the same normal. Um, and if I try to plot that, I will get actually something that looks like that. I don't know how much you can see it in the... Oh, I think it's disappeared. Ah, I have to do it like that, I think. Yeah. Um, which is actually kind of like started to prepare us about matrices and linear transformation. You can see how each one of those points are representing different normals, which kind of makes sense. Each face is facing in this different direction. And in this case, because it's a cube, it's facing the x, y, and z, and it's kind of convenient in this case. Um, so what we can do with vector is a bit of a different thing. Um, so first of all, we can look at what uh, operation, like what's called scalar operation. Um, a scalar operation is just basically doing a multiplication or addition or anything like that, but per component. Okay, so a scalar would be if I have an image over here uh, of Marcy. And I put a multiply, a multiply, and because we said that basically every channel over here is its own matrix, um, a multiply over here or an addition is just basically per component operation. Um, and in this case, I'm adding to every pixel or to every vector value or I'm multiplying, multiplying, scaling it up or down. So it's a scalar, um, which kind of like makes sense. Um, one second. Yeah. Um, so this is just a simple scalar thing, and we'll do it a lot of the time. Um, oh, another thing that I want to say before about uh, also like the, the vector and displacement, you can see that when I'm doing over here transformation, this is actually a vector representation as well. It's not an absolute position in space, but because when I'm just pushing it uh, 100 to the left and 100 to the right over here, I'm shifting it. And if I'm doing it again with the same value, you can see I'm basically displacing it again and again and again. Those positions in those transformations are not absolute. They are relative to where they were before and how they're moving from that. And that's what we'll show, try to show in matrix linear transformation in the axis itself in this four by four matrix. Um, so this is another thing. Um, so this is just a scalar operation. And when we do a scalar operation on a vector, we will always get a vector back because we're doing operation per vector. Okay. Um, the second operation that I want to talk about, actually there is two of them that I think are quite uh, important for 
normals. Is there anything anybody want to ask until now or want to say before I move to dot product and cross product? No? Quietness? Okay. Um, so um, about dot product, so dot product is one of the most probably important thing you can do with normals and cross product as well, it's kind of like his brother. Uh, it's a multiplication operator. And when we say also matrix multiplication, it's a bit confusing concept because it's not like multiplication that we do with just numbers. Um, it's an operation that we're doing on a vector. And if a scalar brings for us a, ve a vector, right, because a vector times a number is still a vector, um, dot product is actually gives us back a scalar. It gives us just a number. And I don't know how many over here uh, heard about the dot product, but let me just paint over here so we can actually see. Um, so a dot product, let's look at something like that. Um, if I have basically a vector, right, and it have the x, y, and z, and if I have another vector, let's say, with uh, another x, y, z, they have to be the same size, uh, a dot product basically means, um, actually I'll just show how the operation looks like, and then I'll try to explain what it actually means. Um, it will look something like that, v dot x time p dot x, okay? So basically we're taking this component and this component and we multiply them, and then we plus this component and this component, so v y time p y, and then plus, we'll of course multiply this, this component and, oh sorry, this component and this component, okay? So basically we multiplied each component and we'll combine them. Um, so dot product is a very important concept and of course the result as you can see is just gonna be one value, right? Because we're multiplying two components, we're adding it to another two components and all together we're gonna get, I don't know, like 0.8 or something like that. Um, dot product is extremely important. Basically the concept that we, I like to think of, point, uh, of dot product is basically to tell us how much two vectors are similar to one another. Um, so, let me look over here, not, not this one. There's too many Chrome over here open. I think it's this one. Wait, which one is it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's look at that. So basically I have two vectors over here. I'll talk about the unit uh, circuit in a bit <coughs> and the magnitude of a vector. And but basically I have two vectors over here. And dot product is basically tells us how much they are similar to one another. So if I would write an operation over here, let's try to write it together. Actually, I have it already ready of open over here. You can see over here. I don't know. Can you actually see the text over here in the video? Or is it too small? Too small? So uh, this, this expression over here tells us exactly what I wrote before on Nuke, um, which is over here. It's exactly this, but in 2D. And I'm basically taking the position, oops, sorry, um, the position of this vector. Uh, x and the position of this vector x and timing that and then doing again the same thing with the y and plus it together and again a new value uh, I think it's too, I don't know if, I don't think we need to actually print it but it actually tells me that it's basically 0.65 the range of a dot product if we're using a um, normalized uh, vector which, which I explained a bit as well again a second um, it will give us something in the range of minus one to one the similarities of two, two vectors um, will come in the form of basically min one and minus one. When one means it's exactly parallel. We're exactly at the same angle as both of them. Minus one when we're actually facing completely the opposite direction, and zero when we're basically perpendicular. And to see it visually, actually what dot product is doing is actually a projection. It projects one vectors onto the other. So if I'll just turn those two on. I don't think we can actually see it in the video. I think it's a bit too subtle, those colors. So I'll just turn maybe th this bottom vectors and the sphere. Can you see this? Uh, actually, maybe if I'll do it like that. Yeah. Can you see this blue line over here? Yes. So as you can see, I have those two vectors over here. And when I do that product, actually, in this case, because this vector is just zero and one, um, it actually shows how this one is being projected on that. And it, gi it gives us kind of like an uh, intuition why it gives us between one and minus one, these values. As, as those two lines basically are getting more and more similar, it will project it 
to be actually more and more the same, right? So as they are touching to be in the same angle, it will project the entire line on the other line, on the entire vector, sorry, not line. Um, and as we are basically going to 90 degrees, you can see how the projection over here is getting smaller and smaller, of course, right? It's, it's actually giving us a 90 degrees triangle over here. So we can see how we're actually going to 90 degrees. It's going until basically it's zero because the projection is just perpendicular. So there is nothing. And same goes for the other direction, of course. If we go the other direction, this line would be projected on the inverse of that or on the reflection of that, the other side, basically. So we'll get this minus, minus something. And if it's parallel to that on the other side, it will be, of course, minus one. Because now it's exactly parallel, but it's pointing the other direction. And it's kind of like the geometric intuition to what basically dot product is doing. Um, the one important thing is that um, if both of them are normalized, meaning that they have a length of one, um, it's a symmetry. So let me just put a sphere again on. As you can see, this one is being projected over here. I'll turn it off again. This one is being projected on this axis over here, on this vector. But also this is projected on this axis as well, on 90 degrees as well. So, so basically they're one and the same uh, in this projection. And they will always work like that. So if I'll go this projection, this to get 90, 90 degrees will go over here and this to this. Um, so now I'll step back and just explain what is normalized mean and what we want that and why it's important on this. So normalize if you're not sure about it. Um, it's a way to separate, I think. For me, I like to think about it like that. It's a way to separate uh, the direction from the magnitude or the length of this vector. Um, so as I said over here, this vector have those two components. It have a direction and it have a length to it. So if I put it over here, just to see, it will be just easier for us. And I look at the length of it, which I already calculated before. Um, I, I know basically that right now that base, it's, it's 12 units or whatever in this world, 12 point something in this world. And it have a direction of an angle of some something. Now I know right now the angle because I can do dot product with the floor over here, with this vector of the ground. So now I have this kind of like direction. Um, yeah, um, and, uh, and the length uh, I can basically compute with Pythagoras um, equation, which I don't know you guys if you guys are familiar with. I'm sure you guys know it from high school. I'll just go over it quickly. Um, let me just do it like that. Yeah. And Pythagoras basically state that a square plus b square equal c square, right? That's what it basically saying. And if you're not sure exactly what it means, is if we have this triangle over here, and I'm sorry for my really straight lines over here. Um, if we have a and b, if we want to find c over here, um, then we basically have to square a and b, and when we get the square, in order to cancel this square, we would have to do a square root. So do something like that. The square root, square root is the opposite of squaring something. So the power of two over here, square root is the opposite of that, is the inverse of that. If you're not sure, by the way, theoretically, we should actually write two over here, if I'm not mistaken, because uh, there is also cubic or whatever number you want. And this, by the way, just a small thing just to explain, this square thing is also equal to something in the power of half. Oh, sorry. Something in the power of half, actually. Or we'll write it like that. Half. So this is actually the same thing. So when we are squaring over here, we're actually canceling this square thing because it's kind of like negating. So now we are canceling one another. And now we have Pythagoras uh, equations. Now we can find this thing. And if you think about it, um, over here, if you think about it, we have the x and y component of this vector, right? Because we are in a Cartesian world. Cartesian means that we are using this kind of like uh, axis of um, units of basically um, yeah, just in this call, yeah, just x and y, how we study in school in z, it's just Cartesian, it's not uh, spherical, we'll talk about, we'll talk about later. Um, so if we take each of those components, because um, we already know, we know the x and the y of this point, right, which is basically a and b, so we can write this as x, sorry, this is the x, and this is the y. Uh, so now if we'll just take those components and square them, and then square root them, we'll get this length. And this is what I'm doing over here. I don't know if you can actually see it as well on your screen, but this is what I'm doing over here. I'm taking the position of the x, squaring that. I'm taking the position of the y, squaring that. Then I'm squaring root. I don't know how much you notice, but actually it's a dot product as well. Um, so uh, 
just except for the, the square root, actually, it's the same equation as the dot product, surprisingly enough. Um, so the reason that we want to do this um, separation, first of all, um, so first of all, so, sorry, so first of all, this is the magnitude of the vector. The second step to normalize that is what we have to go for each component and divide it with this magnitude. So if I have, let me just redraw it again. So now if I have a vector, right, and I have the x and y, um, and I want to find the length of it, right, let's say it's a length or whatever, I'm going to do x square, y square, and I have the length. So now if I go and do x divided by this length, and y divided by the length, I've normalized in that. And normalized means that the vector length right now is just 1. And the fact that it's 1, it's very convenient for us, because now it's not really playing a role for us. It doesn't really affect the direction if, if you want to play with that, if you want to derive information for that. And that's why it's very convenient for us to separate those two informations. Um, so yeah, so this is basically a normalized vector. <coughs> And that's what I'm doing over here. Um, and a unit, um, so over here I mentioned the, po the, the point of basically unit sphere, which is basically this thing. The unit sphere is basically just a circle, or in this case, that the radius of it, so a point from the center to the outmost basically uh, boundary of the sphere is always one. So the radius of it is one. So it means that every vector over here have an length of one. Um, so it means every vector over here, over here is just a unit vector or a normalized vector. So in this case, we can actually study the different direction that we want to do and play with that. Dot product get effect if we're not using normalized vector. It will kind of like skew the information based on the scale of the vector. So first thing we want to normalize the information and then we want to use the dot product to get some information. Um, is there any points until now that maybe people want to ask? I think I lost everybody. Anybody? Yeah? I feel that we need to, or we need at least to, to put all these terms together now, because we have right now some like five at least terms, right? So we have, we have a point which is located in certain space. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, a vector, which is basically it's the, it's the direction from zero to this point. Yeah. It's the direction. Yeah. Okay, so that's the vector. Okay, that's understood. Then we're talking about dot product, and that's the multiplication of two different vectors and how much they are like, how much yeah. they're pointing in similar direction. Yeah, and this uh, dot product is uh, not normalized yet. And we will have to normalize them to get the accurate thing. Yeah, so, so the, the first thing, we, if we're multiplying these two vectors, we're getting dot product, but it's not normalized. Yeah. Okay, and in order to normalize it, we are first we'll have to take the length of it the magnitude of that yeah. so how much the direction of this line is we'll do it with the square root thing yeah the length right the length well, well, okay so okay yeah, yeah so yeah. we'll divide every component one by one with the length of it and we're getting normalized dot product exactly so basically it means that all the components in the vector now will have to sum up to a length of one yeah so it's kind of like reducing everything in kind of like the same kind of like magnitude uh -huh. so now everything have it will sum it to one magnitude of one. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we we have now dot product of uh, dot product which is normalized to one. Mm -hmm. Now kind of like yeah, that's for me this is clear. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'll just say that basically on vectors when we use them, as you said before, I think it was a bit confusing, um, because point is basically we can also look at the point as a vector as well, right? Basically, if it starts from the zero over here, it also can be a vector. Uh, and as I'm moving over here, the vector, you can see it always stays in the same magnitude. So I'll just say that in this case, we can represent it in kind of like a few, a few ways. Um, in these ways, I'm just holding two points. I'm having a position that it will start and a position that it will end. Then I can compute the direction between them with the dot product. And I can compute the length of it with just the square root. I have to subtract from one another. There is another way to use that. Um, and to represent is by having a starting point, but instead of actually having a second point, which is an up... Because basically I'm using two points, right? Those two are absolute, and then I'm subtra subtracting. The other way to use it is actually to have a vector over here, so basically a, posi a starting position, and then another vector that will tell us in which direction how much we are going from this position. W does that make sense as well? 
So I can actually hold, let's say I have a starting position. So right now to get this vector, I'm subtracting this position, which is right now actually over here, as you can see. It's a bit confusing because we have to start from over here. So right now I'm subtracting this position, this absolute position with this absolute position. And this gives us basically a vector, okay? Another way to look at it is we can actually just have a starting position, which is this one, and we can add to it instead of su subtracting those two, we can add to it another vector or basically kind of like a small amount of basically what the vector is, the direction of it and the amount of it. So let's say my new vector, as, let's say my vector is, um, I don't know, four by four or whatever, something like that, and I can just edit this one and I will get the same vector. So this is another way to look at it in this regard. Does this make sense? Yeah? Okay, cool. Anybody want to ask anything else? It just it makes sense, everything of what I'm saying. I don't know if it's kind of like maybe in confusing or slow motion or, yeah. Um, yeah. Tony? Was it Tony or am I wrong? No, no question. Huh? Everything fine. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I just want to show that basically this concept of dot product doesn't mean that we have to use, of course, only perpendicular line on this uh, sphere over here. Of course, this concept works if we have vectors anywhere facing. So if I have, let's say, something like that, we can actually see that this still project itself on this line and this still projects on itself on this line. So the projection always works, it doesn't really matter. The fact that I'm just doing it like, like that, it's just convenient for us. Um, now this is, by the way, related to the concept of projection and that we've done in the previous talk and we're literally projecting one to the other. If you want to get this new vector in the same length, so basically projecting like that, we'll use the dot product value. So in this case, it's a 0.7 and we multiply it with this vector. This is exactly how I got this. So it's kind of like similar to the normalization thing as well, what we've done before. Um, and this allows us to basically scale vectors to reach um, to that vector. And we used a lot, by the way, uh, a simple example is, um, uh, I can tell you that sometimes in graphics, if I want to find where my my uh, mouse maybe reaches on a vector, on a line over here, maybe in Nuke, and I want to do some kind of like GUI thing to touch something, I would actually use the dot product of the line and my mouse, and I will project it and it will tell me exactly where my mouse fall on the line. And if I can compute this vector now, the small vector now, I can actually compute the length of it, and if I know if it's smaller than, let's say, I don't know, a magnitude of five pixels, then I'm touching the line. So this concept of dot product in this case is very powerful because it allows us to understand where we are in relationship to other lines and also how we want to react to that. So maybe if you want to know that maybe an element come physically, maybe coming and bouncing on this direction, what would be the reflection of that as well? I can learn from that and also I can use it to as a magnitude thing, kind of like maybe if it's facing in this direction that like that, coming down a bit more with force, if it's maybe more a line that is less with force and so on. So it's kind of like a very powerful concept. The most useful thing that we use in Nuke, pro or basically what we use is for lighting. And I want to kind of like try to break it down with how we use lighting to do these kind of things. Um, so I have a sphere over here and I have normal for each polygon over here and I have a light, a directional light in this case. And in order for us to get this effect of light illumination on the surface, we are using just a dot product. That's all we're doing. Um, and the concept is, as you can see, I have the directional vector over here. You can see it's been um, drawn over here like that in this direction. And all I have to do right now is do a dot product with each normal over here. Um, yeah, and as I said before, the normals are normalized already. The normals that become the directional vectors we get from the renderers are already normalized. So all we have a um, unit vector basically of one, the length of one. Um, and so, in the, so is the light in this case. So it's kind of like safe to assume what we're doing. And I'll show you if, what would happen if we scale it up. It's kind of like skew the result as well a bit. Um, so I have this and I want to show how I would basically do it by myself just to kind of like wrap all of this concept of vectors together uh, in this case. So I have another sphere over here that I used and I also will use the dragon as well just so we can see them on both cases and, and what happens. And yeah, yeah. And I took out the normals and I also render out the, pos the position world. Okay, so now we have those two <laughs> things. So for directional, as I said before, we only need the dot product. That's all we need. 
and I have an expression node, which I'm going to copy over here so we can see it on a sticky note. Um, okay, so can you all see that? This is what I'm writing over here? Yeah. Okay, so basically what we're saying, and it's confusing because just because we have to use the text that new provide us, right? So in this case, red, green, and blue are one vector, right? It's RGB. Every pixel we said is just in this case one vector. So let's call it P point red or point green, or, in, or maybe even P point X. So red can be X, green can be Y, and then blue could be Z in this case. And we don't write P point something just because red, green, and blue are our master channels, so Nuke doesn't rely on that. I think actually it can maybe write RGB point something, I don't know. But it's the same concept. So we're just doing that product. And then L point X, I created over here another um, knob that basically holds the direction from the light. Um, I'll just tell you that if you want to get the direction of the light, it's these three components, which I'll talk tomorrow about matrices and why these three uh, are actually the direction of the light. Um, but it, it is just over here. And as you can see, the 0, 0, 1 is a normal as well. It just means that we're facing into the Z. It's X, Y, Z. I'm already doing a spoiler for the matrices later on that we'll see, but basically this 0, 0, 1 is just means that we are facing into the Z. X, Y, Z, as it is 1. So it's facing that. And we can see I'm actually plotting it over here. 0, 0, 1. And if I'll change those value over here, you can see that those values change. We can still see it over here. Um, so this gives us a direction. So now we have basically those two vectors, right? We have the RGB, which is the normal that we get from the render. And we have the light normal, basically, or where it's facing, the directional light, which is uh, L point X, L point Y, L point Z. So we are equivalent to, um, to what we said before about the, the um, dot product. If you look at the result, we actually get the light. So this is exactly as a first basic thing how we are trying to um, does it make sense, all of this? Yeah, perfect. So if I'll go and, of course, change the direction of that, we'll see how we are actually getting different light results from that. And all I'm changing is just the direction of the, um, of the light itself. It's important to understand, I think, that it's the Y can be replaced with an axis right now. So yeah, exactly. It's uh, not light actually doing the thing. No, yeah, exactly. It just can be any axis with any rotation. Yeah. Yeah, the light is just for us. What I'm, not even, I'm not even going to put it inside. The basically, it's, this is just an axis. We don't care about it. I'm looking only at the metrics. I can actually complete, completely delete it. Actually, I will delete it. I will just put an axis over here. Yep. And I'll put it over here. I can just write that the new light that we're using is this axis. Yep. Then we still have the same result. And I'm just using an axis. I can still rotate it. It's the same thing. Um, and we're using, again, this um, 3 by 1 or 1 by 3. I'm not sure. Um, X, Y, Z component that basically tells us the direction of the light. Um, any question up until now? Not something is not making yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, in what we are seeing now, where is the dot product, or how can we okay. use it or recognize? Yes. So, I first of all, I'm running. If you go to the scan and render, right, we can go over here and do surface and point, surface normal. So, and we will output that. Output that. Yeah. So we'll have the result of how those channels are. It's just a given render from the scan and render. Any render really renders that, right? And we have a P world over here. I'm just shuffling it into the RGB. So once I'm shuffling into the RGB, it means every pixel over here that we look at is basically representing a vector, right? If you looked over here on the value, this pixel have this vector in it, x, y, z. It means it's those components are now representing a direction in space that this pixel have. Um, this pixel represents a polygon or some surface in space, and this is the normal of where the polygon is facing. So this makes sense, right? Or does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so once we have that, um, we'll use basically, this is a mathematical node, expression node. Um, and this mathematical node allows me to kind of like do um, computation per pixel, in this case, per, per vector in this case. So this expression will run for each pixel over here, and we'll run this equation for us. And this equation in this case is a dot product, and it's what I'm doing over here. This is what I write over here, it's the same thing. And I'm just telling it, go to each pixel. Each pixel for me represents a vector. So go for every vector in this image, every pixel, and do a dot product with the axis direction that we want to do to represent a light in this case. 
Um, uh, yeah. So, the, is it, yeah, what's that? Yeah, 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 super cool, yeah. 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 So, in this case, basically, we're using now, um, I'm copying the vector from this. I will explain tomorrow again about this matrix, but just for us to know right now, this is the, the direction that we need. Um, I'm copying it over here. The reason that I like to use this over here as well is because it's able to con concatenate different axes. So if you have maybe a camera and you want to stabilize or whatever, the world matrix will give us the end result of where it is exactly in space, in world space. We'll talk about it again later on. Um, so I'm copying it over here. So I have X, Y, Z. It's another direction, of course, another vector. So now each pixel is run. All those pixels, eh, sorry, it's, it's, um, each uh, pixel over here will represent a vector dot product with the vector of the light or the direction that we want to use. That's, that makes sense? So uh, visually what we get is uh, it gets brighter as uh, as they become more similar, these two Exactly. Vectors. It's exactly what it's doing. Ben. And also, if you look at the values, I don't know if you can see the values over here on the computer, if I'll sample the position on the sphere, you can see that essentially it's a negative value. It's not, it's not go to zero because the, as I said before, the dot product can actually go in that direction as well. Um, so as we said before, if, if we have a normal face in this direction and a light is, let's say, facing in this direction, they're quite close to one another, we can say, or not that similar, but very close. So we have kind of like a bright, maybe 0.7 value. So maybe it's somewhere over here on the sphere, um, as we are getting very uh, facing, the, actually very facing in the same direction, we have this kind of like one. And if it's, 90 degrees, which probably uh, this line over here that we go from white to black is exactly that. It's probably perpendicular exactly on the zero. And everything that is facing away from us with the normal and the light, not away from us, from the light, uh, gives us a negative value. And again, we saw it with um, we saw it with this projection, right? So this could be our normal, normal of the polygon, and this can be our light. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're just projecting one on the other. And this value over here, if I'll just get the projection of that, exactly the value that we get, the zero, the, the brightness of the white and the blackness is exactly this line. As I said, it's a scalar. It's, a, it's, a, it's just one value, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 or whatever. Um, when I'm saying I think projection is a bit confusing because we're thinking it should be projected into X and Y. But actually it's a scalar. We have to use this scalar to scale our vector into the new X and Y. So in this case, we only care about the scalar. Okay, so how much, it's kind of like to tell us how much it is the same, right? As we said before, this is the, like, the likelihood of that or the likeliness or whatever. Um, so 0.5 would be, this is like 50% if I were to project it of that other vector. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, and we can see again over here, this is the, exactly the point when we're going from white to black, it's, it's completely disappearing, and then we have these black values over here on those lights. Um, one thing that I haven't mentioned, by the way, and it's a bit confusing, um, if you look over here, it's a bit tricky because where are, oh, ah, okay, this is our light. Um, it's a bit tricky because if you see, the Z direction over here is actually facing this direction. And if I'll put a light over here, which, has the, which I have deleted, I'll put a, di a direction on. Yeah. I don't know if you notice, it's actually facing away. I don't know if how much you can see in the computer. This is the Z axis. I don't know if you can see, this is actually facing away from the Z. It's the other direction. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it, because if we will use, um, because we want to know not exactly actually how much they're parallel. We actually want to know how much they're facing one another, right? Because facing one another means that actually this is the light. If they were exactly parallel like that, it means it's completely black. Um, so in this case, if we look on this diagram, essentially, if we just actually use the original Z, we actually get something like that. We'll get these negative values. So we're actually flipping the Z to get the similarity. So it's a bit of a trickery thing. It's not that important, but you can see it's actually it's the other direction. So it's a bit confusing, I think, in that regards. Nonetheless, we can just flip the values and still get this kind of like thing that we are we're using. Any questions on that? Yeah, anybody not sure or confused? Uh, do we want to touch because we 
uh, we've got now, for example, the direction of an axis yeah. or the light. Yeah. We've got it just from the matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to touch how we're getting this from position and rotation, or we don't want to touch straight out. You mean how I'm getting this thing? Exactly. No, this is a matrix itself, and I think so this we'll is to explain. Yeah, yeah, we'll get. Because yeah. uh, my goal is so. This is before. Um, my goal is to somehow explain by somehow tomorrow or Friday, we'll see, mm -hmm. um, this concept of this matrix. Mm -hmm. This is specifically what's called a linear matrix. Um, it's also a fine matrix. It's also augmented matrix. It's different names. And I would like to go over one by one tomorrow to kind of like explain different difference on that. Mm -hmm. And for you to, uh, in the end, eventually understand why we have those different values and what they actually represent. But for that, I have to first explain the dot product, and which is actually matrix is actually dot product as well. We'll see it tomorrow. And what is a cross product? And by understanding, because essentially all of those components over here are just vectors. As before, vector is just one dimension. Mm -hmm. So we can see this is a vector, and this is a vector, and this. So first, I really want to break down the vectors, and I really want to kind of like observe and really understand what is a vector in this case, and why do we need that? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the reason I'm not really touching it yet. Mm -hmm. I want to show a few more things because I still have a bit of time. Um, anybody have more questions? No? OK. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> what, what is I didn't hear, sorry. The, what is the meaning of life? What is it? I'm, I'm questioning the same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's fine. Well. We have 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Uh, OK, so um, now I want to do something that is a bit, uh, now let's, let's try to extend it. So now right now I'm just using normal. We can actually extend it to actually just do a point light as well. But point light doesn't have direction, right? It just uh, emits in all direction. So what is our normal, basically? What is the direction of the light? So in this case, we also have to create a direction of the light as well, not just a normal. So we have the normals of the polygons. But also now we have to know the direction of the light. Direction of the light is basically where the light is, the, the, p the point light, uh, subtract with every p world of um, the polygon. So this is before I have over here this uh, result from the scanline, and I'm putting out a normal, and I'm also putting a position. So as I said before, every pixel over here represents a position in space, where it is. If I look at the scene over here, I have this, and I have a point light over here. So this is our point light over here. It's somewhere in between those guys. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a new vector. As I said before, we can represent the vector in a few ways. One of them is to subtract two different points in space. This will give us a vector. So if I subtract, let's say, this position of the polygon, let's say over here with this light, it's a vector. It's a vector that's now um, pointing towards this sphere over here. And it have this magnitude of what's the, the length between those two points, right? And that's now basically a new vector that we can use. So now we'll take this P world and we'll, um, we'll first of all subtract between the position, the, the position of the light. Um, in this case, I can also tell you that the position of the light in the vector is this area over here, this x, y, z. This is the absolute position of the, um, of the point light. And I'm going to subtract it with the p world, so the position of each pixel over here, each vector, basically. Um, actually, it's not a vector, it's still a point. So this is a point we said, right? So this point subtracted with this point gives us a vector, right? Then we're going to normalize that. And we said normalizing that, we are just doing um, x times x, or x squared plus y squared plus z, z squared, and that's square root. Then we're dividing each component. So let me put a sticky note so we can actually see that. So we have this. And we are doing this. OK, so first of all, we're taking each component of our new vector, right? x, x squared. Um, of course, r times r is actually x times x. x times x is actually x squared. So it's easy. It's the same equation. And then we are squaring root that. This gives us the length of each vector that we just created. Then if we go to each value over here, it's the red or x dividing with the length over here. I'm calling this, this actually is equal to that. Magnitude is actually equal to all of that, right? So we can also write it like that, actually. Maybe it will be more uh, convenient to do it like that. Yeah, and we'll do it like that. So now it will look like that. So now we do it for each pixel. So now we have a normalized value for each uh, pixel, which is a vector. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah? So now we'll use these vectors to drive our position of the light. So now each those vectors would act as a new direction of light. So now each pixel have its own direction of light. 
So if we'll take this guy, and instead of using the light over here, I can actually do it like that. Yeah, we don't really need that. If we're taking this position, this new vector, and uh, doing a dot product with the normals, the old normals like before, so it's the same thing, we have a normal, we're doing this guy, but instead of now using the light, we'll actually get a point light. So now I can use this guy, and it's just a position, not even using, using in direction, it will give us just a point light, right? So we can see how we're getting actually this kind of like uh, point light over here. Actually, if I put it over here, we can do it in screen space, yeah. So now we have basically a point light. Um, and the reason I'm using that, this merge expression, is just a combination of two channels in this case, but it's the same as dot product. If I open it, which for some reason I can't see it. Ah, thanks. And let's sticky note again. And this one looks exactly like before. A and B means the different pipes over here. So just ignore it. Let's call A and B these two different vectors. In this case, our B is our um, new light position. Just we, just we just created, and A is going to be in the normals. It doesn't matter which come before. It's the same thing, by the way. And we can also put this one before. It doesn't matter because it's all compressed into one thing. So we can flip those two A and B. We can flip the X, Y, Z. doesn't matter the order. We're still going to get the same thing. And this is the dot product like before, like we've done over here. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting basically a point light. Does that make sense? Yeah, any question? So we're, we're doing dot product twice here. First, we're doing dot product with the, in this expression. This is no, the we're not doing dot product. Uh, we, we are we're just, we're just, so as I said before, when we looked at this uh, thing over here, yeah, um, we are just creating this exactly vector. We are creating that by saying I have a light position over here mm. somewhere, and I have a P world that I have from the renderer itself, and mm. I'm going to subtract those two. The subtracting will create for me a vector that will basically tell us mm -hmm. each position, each picture, each position of the of the polygon, a new vector that actually points to the light or the other way around, it depends. So I'm creating a new vector that basically tells each pixels now, uh, each P world is going to create a vector that points to our lights. So this is going to be our new uh, vectors. Mm -hmm. So now each pixel are just a vector that points to the light. Well, okay. So something so like that. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> in the first example, the dot product was uh, made by the vector from the normals and a dot, not uh, another vector. And another vector, no, no. Ah, we, you mean this in this example? Yes. We are using two uh, vectors. We, al we always need two vector for that we product. We always need two vectors. Always. For the product. One okay. vector comes from the normal render, so each pixel uh -huh. have is a normal. And the second vector comes from the light itself or the axis, uh, so where it's facing, basically. Okay. Power is facing. Yeah, okay. so anyway, it's not just the position of the axis, but it's not at all. We don't use ex we don't use at all the, the position of the axis. It's okay. just where it's facing. Oh, all right. okay. Okay. In the second example, we still need two vectors. So we're still gonna use the normal uh, vectors from the render. But in this case, we're gonna um, create a new vector because we don't have a direction of light in this case. We just have a position of it, right? It's like it's maybe it's a candle. So each uh, if you think about it, kind of like emits in all direction, right? Or a light emits in all direction. So now we're trying to create this vector to each basically point referencing, referencing this light, right? And this is our vector that points to this kind of like thing. So now we have a new uh, vector. So this basically creates for us a new vector instead of the direction of the light. So these are a new light direction, dot product with the normals of the same polygons. So now we have two vectors dot product that, and then we have basically, again, this point light. Yeah. Um, just one thing. Yeah. Um, when you are creating your vector, yeah. um, you're using a subtraction operation. That means that the um, order um, matters, right? Yeah. Because so, otherwise, you'd be creating, if you, if you don't get the order right, you would create a, a flip vector. Exactly. Right, right? We can right. so if I'll just do that. This is actually me flipping the order. Let's see if it will work. Right. Yeah, that's what we get. Exactly. We actually get the universal, and that goes to what I said before about this confusing thing. If we look at actually over here, right? Yeah. If we look, there is a tricky thing with the light. If I'll just do a light, that's what I said before that there is a trick. It's facing away from actually the direction of the Z, right? Because the Z is actually facing to the left, and the direction is facing that. That's why they actually flipped it to get the correct one because of the parallel thing. So the order does matter, 
and you will see directly once you're going to do that you can just see directly how it's affecting the result right if i flip that you can just see that it's it's wrong um there is also sometimes in uh, some uh, lighting packages a negative light so you can actually sometimes even play with that if you want to do that so you can create other effects as well if you want to subtract maybe a light with that could be another idea um another thing by the way that uh, i think we only have three minutes or one minute can i still five minutes I'll just do it quickly, just the rest of it, just so we can uh, ingress all of that. Um, we can still actually look at the magnitude, and the magnitude is, as I said before, of each uh, would look like that. Where is it? Why am I not seeing anything? Not? Yeah, it shouldn't, should it not show it to me? Ah, because I think, no, uh, it's not, I'm sure it's not the reason, but uh, it is the reason, it's negative, of course. Um, when I was trying to normalize the vector, you can actually see, so the light is somewhere over here. We can see the light is somewhere over here. And as you can see now, each pixel is the magnitude of each vector, right? So we said if we sub subtracted, then we have to normalize that. So I kept the length of each vector in its own channel over here. So as you can see, this is kind of like a dark value because the distance is still small. As we're getting farther and farther away from it, the values are going bigger. And you can see, for example, over here, it's kind of like 2.3 units. Over here, it's kind of like just two units and so on. So it's kind of like the magnitude of that, right? The cool thing is, is now we can do a fall off, like the point over here. So because I've used it in a different channel, I have the same result over here. So I have the same result over here, which looks like that. But I want to have, have the fall off of the light. So what I'm going to add to this entire equation is I'm going to use again this, uh, I've, I've just piped into a different channel, which is the mask point uh, A, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to multiply it again on the entire dot products so that will actually scale our result based on the distance. So when I look at that, now I have this kind of basically effect that give us the kind of like like that and it's going to get stronger as I'm getting closer. So now at the same time, we created, point out, we created uh, new vectors, Dot product, dot product with the normals, using the distance to the, the magnitude of the length, we can actually create this kind of like fall off of light as well. Um, I'll just say that um, it's not enough to just do multiply with the channel of the distance, we have to actually inverse that, right? Because as we're getting closer, it's a small value, and we want to do that the other way around. We want to have a big value as it's closer, and a small value as we're actually going away. So I'm actually doing one over. I'm reversing those values. Um, and... A small note, if you try to do it by yourself, and that's why sometimes I prefer to use this math node or expression node over here. Um, if you try to do sometimes things with just a simple uh, merge node, you'll get error result. Oh, not error, just weird result, and I can show you over here as I was trying to create it. I was trying to create a multiply, and I got this dot product, which clearly is wrong. You can see what happened over here. This is not a correct result. I'm not sure why it happened with different operations sometimes. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a multiply. I'm doing x times x, y times y, and then I'm uh, combine them over here in the expression node. It's the same. This is doing the, just a dot product. I want to do it in a simpler way. Just avoid that if you can, and try to use this expression. You can see actually, if I'm comparing them, both of them are just doing multiply. So this is just a multiply operation like this. It's the same thing, and you can see we are getting just not the same value over here for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why is that. Um, just be mindful about it. Um, yeah, I think we're out of time. Um, I want to show that those things applies to images as well, because not all in the, uh, the same concept tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I'll keep it for this one for tomorrow, but basically, yeah, we'll build up on that for tomorrow. Is there anything anybody want to ask or add? Just big question. Yes. All that we did now, we can achieve it just with the light. Uh, node uh, nuke is just not even light we just use it with a math node like there is no well, lights I, over I, here i get that but uh, i mean if we don't want to do all these things uh, the light node in nuke is uh, is doing the same right exactly it's yeah. it's it's uh, this specific is phone shading in this case i guess we'll do how we do a diffuse light um yeah and i want to show specific the dot product because it will show exactly what is a matrix multiplication with a vector and then it can explain to us what is basically the matrix is that we are using to trans transform different things. Um, yeah, and also actually that, what's that? No, super cool, super great. Uh, any more question before we are, I don't know how much I bored you or overwhelmed you. I don't know which one it is, but um, any more question? 
No? Cool. So thank you very much. Um, I'll try to let you know if we're going to meet tomorrow on Friday to do the matrices, the second part of this, basically, to understand the, the full concept of it and how we can use it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Have a good one. Thanks very much. Look forward to tomorrow. Thank you. Cool. Bye-bye. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye